Amy, owner and curator of Yo So Boho. Welcome back to my channel and to a special edition Tuesday tabletop thrift haul. Tonight, I'm gonna to share with you another way that I make money in reselling, and that is through online auctions. They are great and you can make a lot of money if you do the work up front. So I'm gonna explain that to you. I'm gonna show you only a dozen things that I picked up at this auction. And yes, I spent 400 plus dollars on those dozen things, but my return on that investment should be really nice. So let's get into it. Now, this auction was two parts. They did half of the auction on Thursday night and the other half on a Friday night. And my goodness, if you love pottery and art and all things mid-century modern. This was an amazing auction. I opened these auctions up and I wanted to bid on everything. <laughs> I wanted it all. I could not imagine who this person was and oh my gosh, her aesthetic was just, oh. And I was smart because I went to pick up my stuff in one of the early spots in the morning on the first day that we could pick stuff up just so I could see it all in one place and also get a sense of who this person was and be in their home and my goodness. I will share some of that footage with you. I was very strategic as to how I shot it. I only wanted to capture just a little glimpse so that you could see the curation of this person's estate. Oh my gosh. It was incredible. And you just got a sense when you were there of her spirit and her, she must have been an amazing person. <laughs> I think I would have loved her in, in life. So, um, and I think her things will go on to the right owners. And I love being part of the journey. You know, this, this middle role that I play to connect, you know, somebody's treasures with somebody who is looking for them or will absolutely treasure them for years to come and um, wait until you see some of the things that I picked up. Just incredible. Uh, it's fun watching through some of this because I'm seeing things that I bid on <laughs> that I lost. There was just an amazing amount of beautiful things and the way that she had them displayed, my goodness, if there was a piece of art, it was, you know, near or next to um, pottery or things that really, you know, went together. Such an amazing collection. The pottery. The, oh, I can't even imagine. This was a very small place. I imagine she came from a larger home and this is her downsized kind of later in life living. But she had incredible shelves just filled to the brim with art pottery and beautiful things. All right, let's get into it. I'm going to show you the actual auction pages. Everything is in green because those are the sale prices. I have a process that I'm going to share with you as well and I will show you that and then we will come back and I will show you these things right here. <laughs> because I still have them. Let's go take a look at these amazing auction pages. The auction site that I used for this auction was bidoneverything.com. This is the first day's sale site and you can see an amazing amount of pottery. Lots of black and white pottery there in the beginning. So much pottery <laughs> and art. Now the estate sale itself is called Not Your Mother's Estate Sale, and they were wonderful. When I went to pick up the stuff, the um, people that were running it were just fantastic. So if you're in the Northeast Ohio area and you get a chance to bid on one of their auctions, I would keep an eye out for them. And this site was extremely easy to use. But you can see here, I went through and I did research on everything, um, especially for the first um, day's sale. So I was interested in this set. I went in, and I'll show you what I do here. I take a look at what the keywords are. So this is Magnum Stoneware, Wheel Throne. I took out the Wheel Throne tea service, and I just put in teapot just to see what would come up. And here, 
when I look down here, I can see, oh, Magnum Pottery has their own site, which means they're still active. And this teapot sells for $175. So I make a note of that. And then I go in and I see, well, what else was in that set? Oh, it, there was a cream and sugar. So let's take a look at that. Now the tray was missing from underneath it, but here they are. Here are the pieces. And it looks like they retail for $130. And then I want to check out the mugs because there were also a couple of mugs in that set. And so I take a look at the mugs. And I realize, no, they weren't quite that big. They were a little bit smaller, so let's check out the 8-ounce mug. There it is. And it looks like every 8-ounce mug costs $40. So, you know, I kind of do the math to figure out what that whole set retails for. And then I go back in and I basically chop it in half. <laughs> Here you can see my notes. And... This is work. This is a lot of work. Um, I'm not going to say every single lot because there were just things that I wasn't interested in, but like I said at the beginning, I wanted everything <laughs> in this sale. So here's my notes on lot 095, which is this Magnum Stoneware tea set. And you see where I wrote what the totals were. So the total retails about 385 the total resale is probably somewhere between 2 and 250 and that $66 is with a 10% fee which means um, I bid up to 60 and I won and there's a 10% on top of that which was the 6 so you can see here the next item was a like a pasta bowl here and I went in and I figured out, okay, it retails for 56, which means half of that's like 20, between 25 and 30, which means I'd have to get it for like 11 or 12. And I think it did sell for just above what I bid on it. But you get the idea. Lots of work here. Everything in bold are the things that I actually won. And then I just noted what I paid for them. And that makes it easy to keep track. This was the very first item in the entire auction lot for the very first day of the auction. It is a Marianne Stark um, signed piece. And there were several pieces of this, as you saw on that page. Um, they're absolutely stunning mid-century modern pieces. Um, this is a series called Negro, um, black and white. And this one is these beautiful gazelles repeated on both sides. It's fantastic. And when I looked up comps on this, I was pretty sure based on the rarity of these pieces, because we're not seeing them out there as much anymore, um, that this was going to be at least $180 to $200 piece. And so I set my limit, my top limit of $80 thinking that if I could and that's with fees if I could get it for under $80 I could make at least a hundred on it and that's on the conservative side now since then I have found a more recent comp somebody had it listed for 285 a very similar piece to this um, and they took an offer so I'm guessing they probably took a 250 offer and that's really how I felt this would fall um, when I was doing the research, I thought, you know, I bet it's going to sell for two to two fifty. So I was really happy when um, I was the top bidder on this very first item. I got the piece for seventy seven dollars, so it was right almost at my eighty dollar cap. But I I did get it for seventy, and then with the ten percent um, auction fees, I paid seventy seven. So isn't it wonderful? The next two lots that I bid on were several pieces of Magnum Pottery. Now it was easy to find Magnum Pottery because they are still around and you can still buy these pieces. I purchased the teapot, the sugar and creamer, two mugs and two plates. My first lot, I got the teapot, which is pretty cool. 
It retails for $175. I got the creamer and the sugar, but they're supposed to have a small tray that sits underneath them. So in my mind, I was estimating about $100 for the set. And then two mugs, which retail for $40 a piece. So here we have 80, 100, so 180, and then 175. So we're looking at a retail value of about 355 for the first lot that I purchased. Now you can't think of that as resale, right? So conservatively, I would chop that in half and that is about $175. So in my mind, I'm thinking I'd like to be under $70 to at least double plus my money um, on the conservative side. So if I got it for, you know, 60 bucks, which I did, then there was some profit to be had. That's the point. <laughs> the plates retail for $60 a piece. So in the second lot, I got two, it's 120 retail probably 60 to 80 resale but I got these two plates for $15 so my total spend on all the pieces was $75 plus fees so 10% on top of that and my total resale value here is probably somewhere in the 275 to $300 range so not bad we're looking at somewhere probably close to $200 profit The next lot that I bid on and won were two pieces of Raku pottery signed by Mac Corkendale. Here's the first one. It is a small lidded pot. You can see the inside has some cool little splatter features. And it's hard to see, but there are some initials here and then it is dated 96. Look at the glaze on that. Isn't that beautiful? It's such a rich blue. And it has this really neat kind of shell feature on the lid. And then the second pot is a little different size and shape. It also has the glaze bladder on the inside. And its lid has this cool, almost kind of Aztec looking vibe to it very cool looking this one is again signed and this one's dated 95. how awesome for like a little dresser set they're really beautiful and this blue let me see if i can get it really yeah look at that absolutely stunning i was a winning bid on those for 16 dollars, and that's awesome i will share some comps with you um, as I'm looking through the comps and I'm seeing some one-off sell in the $50 to $60 range, I think with the two together, I'm probably somewhere between one and one, 130, one something. So for $16, add $1.60, so $17.60 is my total on that um, with the fees. That would be a great return on my investment. They're calling this a jar, a stoneware jar. It is made by Unity Pond. This again is a piece that you can find now. The company is still out there and it retails for just over $40. Um, it was great. I got it for $9.53 <laughs> plus fees. So somewhere in the $11 range. This one may land in my pottery collection. I only really bought one thing for myself and I'll actually share that next. It's the very next lot. But as I'm looking at this and the colors, I think this will go really nice in the collection that I'm building for my new backdrop in my office space. So this one may stick around for a little bit. Here's the piece that I picked up for myself. <laughs> I paid $17 for this and that's an amazing price. These sell for about 40 bucks. Um, this is a Van Briggle piece. Now, if you know Van Briggle, you know that this is one of the very popular 
colorations and then there's another in like a cranberry kind of color they had both at this estate and oh my gosh i was in her kitchen she had them all lined up on the windowsill this one um, came home with me this next lot that i won is by far the weirdest oh it scares me to think about shipping these because of how they're built look at these long legs this is a salt shaker. Here's the pepper shaker. <laughs> oh, the cool thing about this is they are in perfect condition. They are made by an artist named Jack Rotar, Rotar, R-O-T-A-R. He is a local to Akron and there are several of his pieces in a virtual gallery that I'll share with you. I want to say there's another salt and pepper shaker in that gallery. Now, these are all made in a series called Friends from Another World. And I understand why that's called that. <laughs> Look at how crazy cool that is. There's the little cork there. Can you imagine if these were your salt and pepper shakers sitting on your table? <laughs> Pretty fantastic, right? I love them. I think they're crazy cool. And if the gallery is selling them for $150, I'm probably not gonna get, you know, that price. I'm thinking I'm gonna be closer to the $100. I might try them for about 120 or 130 and see what happens. This isn't something that's, you know, likely gonna pop up on eBay every day. So we'll just have to see. But how cool are they? Pretty radical, right? The second day of the auction, I decided to focus in on the things that I really had a connection to or really thought would um, sell well and only do research on those things. And then as I got deeper into the auction, I realized that while I was participating in the bidding and putting in my numbers, I had a lot of time on my hands. So I thought, you know, as I go through the second night's auction, I will take the time then to continue to research. I wanted to be really careful because again, you cannot get caught up in the emotion of, you know, somebody's bidding against me and I wanna win, I wanna win. If you're reselling, you really have to set that cap and you have to stick to it. Um, it's soul crushing sometimes because I went back in after and I said, man, that sold for 120 and my and my limit was like 115, you know, or something like that. It was like, man, $5 more. But had I bid an extra $5 over their 120, I would have been up to 125 and they probably would have come in at 130 and so on and so forth. So you just have to really stick to that cap, figure out what it is, really know the value, know that you're going to make, you know, two, three times your money because on you know, a hundred dollar bill, if you can make $200, that's a great little return, um, but stick to it. So you make sure that you make that hundred dollars and don't forget that you're also going to have eBay fees and the things surrounding, you know, your normal sales strategy. So keep that in mind as well, because even though I'll, I'll tell you at the end what my total profits should be, remember that I'm going to have to pay some platform fees to um, list it on the platform and you know, that comes with the territory. So let's take a look at the second day sale and some of the listings and then we'll come back and see what I got. The second day of the auction was just as exciting as the first with amazing art pottery and art. I just kind of showed you that one right there because I got that one. Can't wait to show it to you. But yeah, there were several, several things that I bid on. Um, did not win a lot of them because I stuck to my guns. <laughs> but check out some of these crazy cool art pieces. That teapot actually was called Alien Something. And I'm going to talk a little bit about these red pieces. It's funny, I've actually seen these out in the wild and did not realize that they were valuable. Haven't seen any in a while, but definitely something to keep a lookout for. Um, the brand is called Vectorsbach. We'll talk about it. 
more of those beautiful Van Briggle tulip vases. They had four in today's and just the one in the first day sale. Just some amazing things. And she had like duplicates. Like she was definitely an entertainer because she'd have, you know, duplicate pieces for parties. Just fantastic. So this was it. This was the final page. So a shorter one on this day. Okay, let's take a look at what I got. This by far is the favorite thing. It's probably the most valuable thing, but it's also probably my most favorite thing that I purchased at this auction. It is the most detailed, most beautiful, smallest <laughs> piece. It only measures probably maybe four by five. And it is made by the artist Noreen Simplicio. Uh, it is Zuni from Zuni Tribe, so it's Zuni Pottery. This is called a seed pot. It has no opening, um, just these little holes where you can see these beautiful lizards crawling through. I'm gonna zoom in here carefully so you can see. And then there's art that goes around here with these gorgeous deer. And here it is signed. Because I did my research, I knew the value of this and I was so excited to get it as well. I paid $62 for this piece and I'm probably going to be 10 times my money on this one. Um, I think I'm gonna be listing it somewhere between six and 800. Um, I will show you some comps. There are some comps that are really low. Obviously, somebody didn't know what they had, but there are comps for over a thousand dollars for a similar piece. And it's, it's one of those pieces that is rare and is so worth it. <laughs> I can't even fathom a collection of these. It's, they're just amazing. I will be taking very good care of it until it goes to the right collector. And um, yeah, this was an awesome, awesome find. This piece caught my attention just because of the colors. It's so vibrant, it's so happy, and I absolutely love it. I love how it's framed. I love that the frame and the mat are kind of the same color and it just pulls out all of those blues, those teals. It's fantastic. This artist, Anne Stockdale, is someone who, she has such a cool story. She is from London. She trained at some like prestigious acting school. She ended up like moving over here and I think she was on Broadway and <laughs> and then, you know, became an artist and then also um, created three albums. So she has three albums where she wrote um, and sings her own songs. So she's just kind of like the artist, right? There are a couple places to buy her art online. She has her own website and then there are a couple of other gallery sites that feature her. Um, this piece, when I did my original research, in my mind, I thought this is probably a $500 to $800 painting. They called it a watercolor on the auction site, but she actually uses oil on watercolor canvas. So it's kind of unique and it does look like watercolor, um, but it's just a, you know, a special style that she paints. That's what I learned when I did my research and I absolutely love this piece. I got it for $35. So another 10 times my money because I think at a minimum, I can expect 350 for this piece. The next thing that I bid on was a large copper kettle. And this was a piece that was sitting in her kitchen or near her kitchen. It is an old piece. It is hammered copper and these handles are wrought iron, um, like handmade <laughs> wrought iron handles. 
It has a beautiful rolled top. It is in brilliant condition. Um, I'm seeing some of these in not this condition with, you know, discolored or rusty handles um, selling for over $300. So when I did the research on this by size, because it's nice and large, um, by condition, by age, I was looking at definitely something worth over $300. I paid $72. So add the fees to that, $7.20 means I paid about $80 for this, and I do expect to get about $350 for this piece in this condition. It's rather large. <laughs> Pretty great, right? One thing that was fun about this Friday night auction was I was on the phone with my mom and my sister and they were watching as I was bidding and looking at all of the auction. And my sister, who if you watch my channel, you know, is also a fan of pottery. She had me bid on, well, several things, but she won three things and they were really great. Um, I'm gonna put some photos over here as I talk, but wow, she did really good. She stuck to her guns and she got this piece for $7. She got this piece for $16, and she got this piece for $18.53. Now remember, add 10% to all of that. <laughs> I think she owed me about 40 bucks. The very last things that I got were these mugs. I got a set of white and a set of red. Now these are made by Vector Spock. They say Spain on them, um, but that's definitely like a German <laughs> name here. Here, this one's easier to read. But yeah, it's, it's Vector Spock. These are Valentine's mugs and I'll tell you what, I have found these one of these sold for about 20 bucks, just one of them. I've also seen a set of two sell for about that same price. Um, I estimated that they would be about $12 a piece, so that's $24 for this set, $24 for that set. Um, however, I have not been able to find this red version, so this might be a little bit more rare. I might ask a little bit more for this, but I will be selling them as a set, the red set and the white set. You may recognize this name because there are a lot of red plates with the green, real simple green Christmas trees on them. I have run into them while thrifting and didn't really look at them twice, probably because they didn't fit my aesthetic. I didn't really like them, um, but they do cost some money. And so if you find a nice set of Vector's Bach stuff, definitely pick it up. I grabbed these because I bid on them for five and six dollars and that was a great price. Um, that means I got one set for 550 and one set for 660. That was good. So that was only 12 lots that I purchased. My total spend for the very first day's auction was $226.53. Now that is with me adding the fees. So that is with the auction fees. And my conservative estimate for value, um, for resale value, is $785 for the first day sale. Not bad. The second day sale, however, I spent $198, and that is with fees. But my estimated value on the conservative side for resale value was $1,090 for that $198. So I did much better on the second day sale. My total spend for both nights was $424 and my total estimated value on the conservative side is $1875. Now, remember the eBay fees that are gonna be associated with that. So I'm not gonna be quite there, but Pretty nice that I'm looking at making about $1,400 on my 12 lot purchase. Um, that's the way that I do it. If you do your research up front, know what you're gonna spend, stick to that number, do not go above it. Even if it means you don't win anything, 
You know, maybe there's a different strategy. Maybe you're missing something, um, but really do yourself a favor. Do the math and figure out what it is and don't spend more than what you know is going to be a good return on your investment. Take everything else into consideration too. You know, I spent probably six to eight hours, maybe even more on both auctions doing some research. I had to take the time to, you know, go travel an hour away and pick these things up. So, you know, you have to consider all of those things when you look at what your total investment's going to be and what your total profit's potentially going to be. All things that you have to consider um, when you're a reseller and you take this plunge, but you can make good money. And this was a fun auction because it was all art, um, which I love, but take a look at the auctions in your area, even when it comes to you know, household items. A lot of times people are not interested in doing the research on, you know, tools or um, other kinds of collectibles or who knows. If you do a little bit of work, you might be surprised depending on who's watching that particular auction and what their interest is, you might get lucky and you might get something really cheap. Whether it's a live auction or an online auction, I've done pretty good with them. So I hope that you'll try it out. It's a unique way to make a little bit of extra money. And feel free to hit me up if you have questions or you decide to take the plunge. Let me know what you got and if you got a good deal. I would be excited to hear from you. All right, everybody, that is the end of my auction adventure. I hope that you enjoyed it. I know it was a little bit different. If you're still here with me right now, I appreciate you the most. Um, if you're still here with me and you have not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. It's super easy. Hit that little alarm button too and hit all so you know when I put up a new video. I do that a couple of times a week. Um, biggest thing you can do is share my channel. So if you have a friend who likes to thrift or resells or just likes treasure hunting, um, share my link to my video or to my channel with them and tell them that you've met a new friend. That will make the biggest difference to um, the channel and to building our Yoso Boho tribe. Also, leave me a comment down below. Tell me what I got that you would have uh, bid on too, um, or just say hello. And then while you're clicking around down there, click a like or a dislike button and yeah, all of that business. All right, everybody, I will see you on Thursday with a shopping adventure, the Goodwill in Chardon, Ohio, amazing things, including a big bolo. So be there until then, take care, and I will see you on Thursday. Bye.